Hi everyone. So recently I was in the process of uh, upgrading a vSphere environment and we upgraded the vCenter server. Uh, well, then we upgraded the ESXi hosts. Then we upgraded the VMware tools. And finally we upgraded the VMware hardware version. And uh, we had no problems actually, everything went smoothly. But uh, we did realize that after we had upgraded the VMware hardware, uh, in our case, the DR uh, solution that, we've, that we had chosen uh, was not compatible with that particular hardware version for the VM. So luckily we only had a handful of VMs that we upgraded because we realized the mistake uh, early on. And so we were able to uh, revert those VMs. But in uh, trying to figure out how to do it, uh, which we had, had, I had actually come out across this issue a long time ago, but I couldn't quite remember how we had done it. And uh, there is a VMware KV article uh, that, that talks about these issues. Uh, matter of fact, before we get into that, let's go ahead and look at my environment here. So here I, I ended up doing uh, uh, just multiple VMs at different VM level, uh, hardware level. So as you can see, the VM uh, version for this is 11, this one here is 13, and 14, and so on and so on. Uh, so the reason I did this was so I could figure out how, exactly how to quickly revert back. Uh, because you can easily upgrade the version to whatever the default value of your current uh, deployed vCenter environment is, right? So whatever the default uh, for that particular environment is, it'll upgrade it to that uh, version. Or if you want to a specific version, you can do that too uh, through PowerShell. Uh, or when you're creating a VM itself, you can you can choose the VM version. But in our case, we wanted to go ahead and revert the version back to just one level, and it's not that quite easy. So here are the steps that uh, we ended up uh, doing uh, to revert a VM. I have here uh, version 15, and you can see it's uh, VM version 15. And I'll also take note that the VM itself is powered off. Uh, the VM must be powered off. Otherwise, uh, you, when you make the change, and then you, re, you re either restart the machine or use uh, to VMware tools to restart the, the guest OS, the, 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 the version will revert back after you change it. So make sure that the power, uh, VM itself is powered off. So uh, in this case, so let's go ahead and just, uh, we'll pick off, we'll pick this VM to revert back. What I ended up doing is I have WinSCP and I am going to connect to this host here. It doesn't matter which host, ESXi host you connect to. As long as you're using shared storage and that those ESXi hosts uh, can reach out to the data store and the VMX files, uh, you're good to go. So let's go ahead and connect to this machine here, this ESXi host, dash one. Yep. And we're going to say root. Okay, so I'm connected to my ESXi host. You can see here in the tab, and then I can definitely see my BMFF, uh, BMFS, and then my volumes, and my shared storage is this one here. So I'll go ahead and double click on that guy, and I'm gonna go to VM15. Now I have uh, Notepad++ installed just because it's my preferred text editor but you're welcome to use whatever text editor. In this case, the WinSCP has a built-in editor. So we're just gonna go ahead and right-click the VM15.VMX, uh, go edit, and I'm gonna choose Notepad++. And here, there is a line that you're gonna to have to change the value for this particular uh, virtual hw.version line. So I'm just gonna change that back to 14 and I'm going to save it and I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Now what I'm going to do is now that the change has been reverted, uh, I am going to power on this machine and then just take note here. And there you go. Now while I was doing this, um, I did notice also that uh, the descriptor file for the VMs also has a, a unique version. Uh, what I'm talking about here, I'm going to go back to here to the VMDK file now. Right-click that, click Edit. I'm not going to make any changes because obviously the VM is powering on, uh, but I just wanted to show you that. So uh, if I click that, there is a particular hardware version that this uh, uh, is running on. In my case, it's version 14. 
Now, as I created all these other VMs on the left-hand side here, um, each one of these was, was set at 14. So in my environment, 14 is good. If you are running an older version of uh, vSphere, you may have to change this value uh, according to the VMware hardware version for the VM, uh, in this case, in the VMX file. Now, there are some additional information that I have in the blog uh, uh, posting, uh, so you can check that out to, for, for more information. Um, so that's pretty much it as far as change, reverting back the VM version. Uh, as you can see, it took me seconds. You know, Once I'm logged into the ESXi host, uh, I pretty much just navigate to whatever data store that I want, go into the VM, right-click it, edit, right, and make my change. Save it, and then power on the VM. That's it. There is a PowerShell command that I was playing around with. Um, in this case, let's say I have VM, we are, uh, VM 14 here, get VM. And as you can see, this particular VM is at version 14. Uh, the command to revert it back is get VM dash VM 14 set VM version, or I should say the, the, the attempt that I made was to revert it back using PowerShell. But unfortunately, when I do this, let's say I want to do version 11, right? And it says, okay, uh, do you want to go ahead and change it basically, right? And I say yes. And as you can see, the, the issue here is that the virtual machine compatibility is already up to date. So it won't let me downgrade. Now, it is, I believe, technically possible using PowerShell to downgrade the VM, but you would have to create a custom PowerShell script instead of using a built-in commandlet uh, or commandlets in this case, as you see here. And that's pretty much it. Um, all right, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video.